As a fan of the Alien franchise, the most common question that I often get asked would have to be just what is my favorite design of the Alien? To me, that's a pretty hard question, especially when you count the depth of variation that exists in the expanded universe. There's just something about the Xenomorph on a basic level that allows it to keep its balance between terror and beauty no matter what configuration it's put into. That said, there is one variant out there, a piece of unused concept art from Prometheus, that upon seeing it has stuck with me like no other Xenomorph since the first time I saw Big Chap in Alien. Today, let's take a closer look at what could have been and what I would love to see appear in some future Alien franchise film, one of my favorite Xenomorph concepts, the Ultramorph. In the early drafts for Prometheus, back when the working title was still Alien Engineers, writer John Spates had the film playing out as a direct prequel to Alien. Taking place on LV-426 instead of LV-223, a crew would encounter the Ultramorph, an alien born of the famous space jockey discovered by the crew of the Nostromo. One of my favorite concept artists, Carlos Huante, was tasked with drawing up images of what this creature would look like. He talks about the realization that this film would take place before the H.R. Giger style would come into effect, and that this made him try to come up with a complementing art style to the Giger designs that would later follow. He says that both he and Ridley Scott agreed that everything should have a white and embryonic look to it. As a direct reference, Carlos went to the origin of the alien, H.R. Giger's Necronom 4. Not only are the images very similar, but it made me realize for the first time that both the Ultramorph and the Necronom 4 biomechanoid are not covered in the traditional alien exoskeleton-like armor. Instead, they're covered by a pale semi-translucent skin. Later in the writing process, in order to get more in line with that big chap from Alien, the decision was made to give the creature a more traditional xenomorph-like armor, ditching the pale skin idea for use with human-bred aliens, not jockey or engineer-bred ones. Initially, Carlos came up with the idea that what if the engineered technology is all of that ribbing and bony architecture that's all over the ship and the alien itself? He says that the aliens that are born out of humans should be clean and skin covered because they're not yet saturated with the genetic material of the source, i.e. the engineers, just yet. So they are more human looking. The ultramorphs should be the first we see of the bony exoskeleton on a creature. An interesting idea even if it didn't get used. It could even explain how the pressure suits that the engineers wore in Prometheus are created. Unfortunately, the Ultramorph would lose its place in the scripts, getting replaced by the Deacon, while the idea for these white embryonic aliens would be shelved for later use with the Neomorphs and Alien Covenant. What we do know about this Xenomorph variant before they were placed in the unused Xeno bin for later use by Fox slash Disney is that they were huge and I'm talking like 15 to 16 feet tall, or around four and a half meters. This made perfect sense as they were born of the engineers, and at this point in the scripts, their look wasn't finalized, yet most of the designs had them as much taller than the engineers we got in Prometheus, lining up more with the size of the original space jockey in 1979's Alien. It was also mentioned that the Ultramorph would grow into its adult form extremely quickly, another trait that would be used later on by the protomorphs and neomorphs. The concepts show an alien with features lining up very close to the Necronom 4 alien, with sleeker, more elongated heads and bodies, along with one sporting the same eyes of the original inspiration. I have to say I always liked the lack of eyes on the Xenos throughout the films and especially liked it when you could faintly see that skull underneath the dome. That said, I'm not sure which look I like better here. The one with the eyes, paying homage to Giger's first take on the creature, or the ones with the bulging faceplates. Each one is horrifying, yet graceful in its own way, and something I'd definitely love to see on film. Fans of the franchise have long pondered just what an alien born of a space jockey would look like, and looking to the expanded universe, the idea has already been done with the Dark Horse comic, Aliens Apocalypse, The Destroying Angels. Here, the space jockey bred Xeno, dubbed the Destroyer, had a design more like that of the original Big Chap, coming in a bit shorter than the Ultramorph at around 12 feet or 3.5 meters. Another incarnation would pop up in the Nintendo DS game Aliens Infestation, with this one having more of a jockey-like head than the others. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again. Ideas that happen from within the Alien franchise that go unused have a habit of showing back up in later films. I really hope that this happens with the Ultramorph. To me, it's a beautiful design. And the very idea of just what kind of alien came out of the space jockey in that derelict craft on LV-426 has intrigued me for over 30 years. What are your thoughts and questions on the Ultramorph? Is this not one of the most badass alien concept designs from the franchise? Do you want to see this used in a later film? I'd love to hear your response down in the comments.